Yate Osio Halito Estango Bojo from the Indian Nations University. You're watching Haskell News. Welcome to Haskell News. I'm Joe Singh. Students are trying a new health drink out. Here's Max Tuckfield with more about kombucha. Energy drinks help sleep deprived students. But what about all the sugars and other ingredients that are actually counterproductive? Kombucha is a natural alternative to energy drinking. Have you uh, ever had kombucha before? Never. Have you ever heard of kombucha before? Never. Would you like to try kombucha? Yes, sir. Well, when I first came about kombucha, I wasn't too fond of it, you know? I mean, it smelled horrible, kind of fermented, and like aged, but gotta try it sometime, because it tastes kind of good once you get to it. It's an acquired taste. Kombucha. Master Brew, what is this? This is the first one I smelled. Probably shouldn't start off with this one. I'm personally more like a dragon fruit kind of guy, a grapefruit, you know? And you can crack open a cold one with the boys on Saturday nights. It's pretty good. Tastes like spicy water. Like once you get used to it, you'll come to like it. I guarantee it. The community of yeast and bacteria, which is pretty much what your belly is is just symbiotic bacteria eating things and pooping it out and that's what we use. I haven't been sick in like a year so and I drink kombucha pretty often like once a week. She also drinks lots of water and exercises. I do think that kombucha has some part in that. Like everywhere is different with her kombucha. Wherever you go in the U.S. There's different little yeasties in the air, and little bacterias, and that affects your kombucha. And like there's different temperature and air pressure and all that kind of stuff. It's like lo your local biome and you're just like drinking it. Yay, microbiology. <laughs> Don't go off your very first sip. Don't smell it before you drink yeah. it. <laughs> like take a sip, yeah. take it in. If it's kind of grody, like it'll grow on you. Just try it a second time. That's what I'm trying to say. Ah, uh, tell me what you think. Yeehaw, brother! Some students on campus feel like they are being targeted by campus staff. Hunter Hatulke spoke with one student who'd prefer to remain anonymous in order to avoid repercussions. Do staff members target certain students? And what are the things you should know about your rights? Yeah, we, sh we should always know our rights. If we don't know our rights, then it's easy for someone to abuse our rights. And that's a huge issue. I, I feel like I've been targeted by an RA before, actually like by a couple of RAs. And this particular RA usually um, actually targets a lot of other students from what I've heard like basically that RA will use things against you like your words against you like I want to be there to talk to this RA you know talk with them but whenever I am around them I always get that feeling of I can't say anything around them because they're not going to be there for me they're looking for ways to get me in trouble and that's really an ugly feeling I mean yeah they gave us the handbook but you know, that's pretty much the bare minimum. I feel like more can be done. I mean, they've, they've met the requirements, but I feel like more has to be done. Um, I mean, I, I understand that it's our responsibility as students to read the handbook, but I feel like more has to be done. Um, I think in the past we've had some incidents um, where people might have appeared to have targeted um, students with incident reports and things of that, that nature. Um, but generally what we've done is we've been able to address it with both parties. You know, if a student felt that they were being targeted, that, you know, these are some of the things to look for and these were the avenues that they could do um, to um, kind of address it. And then we would also notify the areas of the, uh, of the person that might, might have appeared to have done that. <clears throat> I think we've been we've done a good job of really being able to address it at the time that we have it. The last thing I would like people to know um, is we do have a grievance policy. 
Um, it is difficult sometimes. Students don't, you know, have something that will happen to them. They'll have either a staff or faculty that might treat them kind of strange, and then they, they're afraid to say something. They don't want to get them in trouble, that kind of thing. <clears throat> but then <clears throat> when they get the write-up, then they want to do something about it. But you really should do something about it when it happens. So it doesn't look like you're being, you know, you're retali retaliating because you got a write up. Mm -hmm. If if, some, if you see something, if you experience something, if if you f have something happen to you that just doesn't feel it, feel like it's right, um, say it, say do something about it. There is a grievance policy in the in the back of the code book. <clears throat> there is a form that you can fill out, and it tells you who to talk to. Um, even if you do get a write up and you do want to write them up, you still have a right to do that. This is Hunter Lazulki, Haskell Student News. Haskell held a Black History Month panel for students. Here's Shirley Cipher with more. On February 21st, a selected panel of students discussed their lives coming from mixed racial backgrounds and dealing with the struggles of being identified as both Native American and African American on campus. The student growth of more diverse students are increasing more each semester, but are also still struggling with accommodating students on campus that are mixed racial backgrounds of being identified as another race along with being Native American. Haskell University is an all Native American campus, but is still diverse with mixed students that are also African American, Hispanic, Latino, and every other background. And here is a student's thoughts who attended the discussion panel. I think that was really good. I, um, when I came here my freshman year, we didn't have anything like that. Like, no one really talked about um, like the different months for like different ethnicities and stuff like that. So when they had the black pan, the black panel when they had that, I was really surprised that they were having that, and I wasn't even thinking about going. But when I went to that panel, it was good to hear from other students who are like me, who have who face the same difficult problems that I face with, like, because some of them did grow up Native, but not Black, or they grew up Black, but not Native. So it's like, it's a different perspective on, like, how each one of us, even though we all look the same, that we all share something common with each other. Haskell introduced the first ever Two-Spirit Drag Show, coordinated by Carrie Cornelius and Bryce Smiley. Throughout the Two-Spirit Month, the tone of reclaiming Two-Spirit roles was apparent during the drag show. Chris Takalai interviewed a few people who attended the drag show, and here's what they had to say. Enjoy. The Two-Spirit movement has come a long way, so it feels good uh, to see student activism students wanting to take a part and uh, that's really what it's about. This is the first time in history that something like this has ever occurred on this campus and in doing so I think it makes a lot of the the younger children back in the 1800s feel good because who's to say that they themselves are two-spirit or transgender. Um, I think it really broadened a lot of people's minds and really opened up their perceptions of what LGBTQIA is and the Two-Spirit community. I really opened up a lot of open spaces for people to talk about it in general, talk about being Two-Spirit. Because I mean, for me, I have it, I mean, I have relatives that are Two-Spirit, but, but even then, we're still continually learning and everything. Yes, I feel like I have seen Haskell take some positive steps to make this a more comfortable place for the LGBTQ community. And I'm really glad to see that because the college that I went to, it was a really, it, so to me, it seemed like it was a um, very accepting environment. I'm sure there were some things I didn't see, but overall, we, you know, we attended a different events that the community had, and um, it was a really seemed like a really supportive environment. And I had a lot of my friends who are in the community, and so I'm glad to see that Haskell's taken some steps to make our students more comfortable. I, the message I would give them is that to come and see who we're about. Many people think that we should come back into the circle, but actually we've always been in the circle. It's just that we're being more vocal now. We're being more no recognized and noticed. And a lot of us have begun to so-called come out of the closet and represent the people that we are and who we're born to be. And so with that, I think that as a community and as Haskell, as a little community as they are, that they would recognize us and honor us and put us in that place of honor. 
everybody needs a safe space to go and talk about um, whatever whatever ha people have in common. And I think that it would be really helpful towards everyone, not just LBTQIA, but towards everyone so that we all understand each other. I would just like to say while you're here, make the most of your time, look for the faculty and administration people who support you. They'll make your time here uh, more memorable. Uh, prepare yourself uh, for the real world. Learn as much as you can. I know that sounds cliche. I know you've heard that before, that you're the future. You're the leaders of the tomorrow. Well, you know what? I was exactly standing where you're at right now. And I can tell you is that the people that I graduated with, they went on to be tribal leaders. A lot of them went on to be teachers, lawyers. They went on to be professionals. Some of them went on to get their PhD. Uh, so this is a really great thing that you guys are here doing for yourselves and maybe for your communities. So uh, that's, that's what I would say, that invest in your time here, learn as much as you can, because all the skills that you're, you're attaining, they will be valuable. And uh, yeah, I mean, do it, do it for you. One club on campus is helping students maintain a healthy lifestyle. Here's Max Tuckfield with the story. Thank you. The Haskell Track Club is a group of students who are wanting to improve their physical and mental well-being. Some are doing it to stay in shape for cross country, and others are just doing it to stay healthy. I joined because um, I love running, even though I really don't want, didn't like it growing up. So I could stay physically fit to run for cross country next semester. It was mostly, I was part of the, for my freshman year is when they cut it, and that's when the beginnings of track club formed, so I was just kind of put into it and I was really into trying to make it work. Um, because the workouts are intense and plus I've never joined like collegiately track so it was kind of like a new opportunity and also to get better for cross country season. Um, benefits, my first one that pops to mind always is I didn't really have that team atmosphere where I came from and so I, I definitely love that with the men's team here especially. We just don't want to don't want to finish that workout, we'll you try to pat on the back, you know, do that little handshake thing because we're about to die, but at least we'll die together. I don't have to, to be constantly physically active and getting stronger little by little bit and running faster. Yeah, it's, it's brought a lot more people on the team than we've had in past track seasons. I'd say go on ahead if you have the time and weeks to because It'll keep you active and physically fit for whatever you need to do later on down the line. The club meets up at the Jim Thorpe Gym at 4 p.m. from Monday through Friday. Thanks for watching the Haskell News. From all of us who helped produce it, I'm Joe Singh.